no doubt we got a matchup that you should definitely be excited for if you're any bit of a competitive tier on fan. We got the classic. Sink Esports taking on Bad Monkey Gaming with a little bit of a twist. Obviously, BMG, quite the new roster here going into cycle two originally. They finished fourth place, you know, a little bit disappointing in the end. But as we've talked about, we've seen they maybe not have been practicing as much as they should have been. They're matched up against Sink here for the first time with this remake here. I will say I did see the practice at least a little bit throughout the week. I'm excited to see how they match up here against Sink. With that said, joined by Mini Mega as always. It feels it feels good, man. I mean, this is the BMG Sync matchup, but again, a little bit different. I'm excited. Yeah, man, it's, it's a little bit different, but yeah, again, this is this sort of match that gets people excited. It's the one that people get hyped, and and you know, deservingly so. It's probably like arguably before obviously BMG changed. It was the top two teams in Hon right now, and there's yeah you know, a lot of history that goes back to it as well. Obviously, like we said before, uh, BMG lineup a little bit changed, but still, uh, we can definitely expect a very, very good series today. Yeah, looking forward to that, and obviously already developing into the draft here. As you can see, definitely some fun things to talk about. Uh, well, I mean, again, first off, I will just go over this real quickly. Obviously, BMG, it happened to Cycle 2, but if for some reason they're still not aware of what's going on. Hanskin, Jonas fan, and Sioka ultimately leaving. Uh, in replacement, though, obviously Super KGE and Zibe still a part of the team. They picked up supports. Uh, Haxorin and Tankafet, who are now make up the new five-man roster for these guys. So especially Haxorin and Tankafet, they have been out, out of the scene for quite a bit of time. Support more recently, but still, you know, also in a sense, your support going up against this old team. Definitely kind of a, a storyline there as uh, going true. up against Sink Esports, of course, and Sania replacing him on the roster. And from my understanding, it was it was a team decision. I mean, it wasn't support's yeah. decision necessarily. It's no, like no, no, we no, want no, to pick no. up Insania, so. They were like, yeah. Do, yeah. They thought, yeah, they thought support sort of play just wasn't really good enough to, to, to you know, to the standards Zinc wanted to have, and so they picked up Insania and, and dropped support. So there's definitely a little bit of revenge uh, needed here for support. But uh, the draft is already underway. The, the blind bands, Swift Blade, Rhapsody, Magnus, and Kafulathan, and then uh, BMG looking kind of uh, sort of almost a ganked sort of strategy already picked up with the Parasite, Empath, and Chipper, and Zinc going for a bit more of a team fight oriented sort of lineup with Glacius, Tempest, and Kraken. Uh, one thing to, I'd like to point out already though is that. BMG first picked Parasite, that's fine. Uh, obviously, Glacius was a counter pick to Parasite. But then they actually picked up Tempest. So, like, they've picked up a jungler, even though there's no really way BMG could run, like, a Tempest or um, in, in the sort of the second uh, sort of phase anyway. I mean, I understand that they want to pick him up before the banning phase, because yeah. obviously Tempest could definitely be banned, but I don't know. Maybe they were going to pick up the Kraken anyway. So, yeah. maybe not the biggest of deals, but obviously that's been noted. Yeah, yeah, and it's one of those cases, like, they could have went into the third pick, but really it doesn't change a whole lot. It, I wouldn't be surprised if it still happened the same way as far as the no, draft, exactly. you know. Obviously yeah, how it's shaped so. up with the crack of final pick. And Chipper, though, coming out for BMG, going to most likely be in the hands of Zibbe there, and Zibbe's Chipper, very, very deadly indeed. And, in fact, again, the stat that we talked about on the podcast, uh, one of, a couple stats, but Chipper actually had 100% win percentage last cycle, went 8-0 and in that cycle, and, you know, a good amount of that was, of course, in the hands of Zibbe. So... That's something I keep uh, keep note of here, as he's going to get it here for BMG once again. But uh, the, the the band's developing now, uh, as, as far as that's concerned. Dr. Repulsor in his silhouette. There's Puppet Master then coming out. Silhouette's kind of as interesting. As Provoska actually talking about how he feels. If there's a hero right now, they, you know, maybe not your everyone's go-to hero that should be receive some nerfs even, but Silhouette was on his list. Seems like he really mm -hmm. thinks Silhouette has a lot, of, a lot of strong potential ever since those changes. So going to be banned here, though. That's not picked. In the end. Prisoner yeah, so being banned. Prisoner banned. I mean, which was actually the last series how Prisoner had quite a big effect, particularly in the dual lane. And, and I'm glad actually Flynn's Master did the ban that, because most likely it's going to be sort of chipper in the short lane, uh, most likely. And, and obviously it's going to be most likely Kraken and Glacius in the middle lane. And, and if you're running uh, sort of dual jungle and obviously, uh, sorry, yeah, jungle on either, on either time and obviously uh, dual mid as well, making sure you have at least a presence in the middle lane, regardless if you, you win it, you just can't lose it. Because if you lose that, then it's such a big deal in terms of what happens into the mid game. So just banning out the prisoner here just to make sure, you know, at least the Zinx middle lane has a, has a good start. Yeah. So uh, the torture ban there indeed. And now the final ban going to be coming out for Sync. Now we'll say 15 seconds remaining for BMG. And again, Tank Fed over here. He's kind of stepped in as that new captain. You know, understandable. Obviously, uh, this guy has captain experience. And in fact, at the dream hack, he's ever too much sugar. And uh, he, he's, he's quite the talker. You know, he's quite the communicator for the team and definitely fits in that role very, very well. So um, he is going to be uh, obviously in the lead here. And uh, we'll see what he picks up with his fourth pick. But Soul Stealer. Actually, the final ban for Sync Esports. It's kind of interesting there, but taking out the Soul Stealer option 
uh, to perhaps uh, give to Haxer in here. So, uh, again, BMG, again, Haxer and especially really known as more of that. He picks, he usually leans towards more of those absolute hard carry kind of heroes, but call it into Vindicator. I don't know if we saw oh, Vindicator at all cycle two. I don't think so. We saw it quite a big deal actually in cycle one, I think. Or it was Card to Calamar yeah. more so. Or yeah, really saw that was it. So I remember, I remember casting. It, I thought like Vindicate. I, mean, like, I love Vindicate. I think the hero is so so awesome and so strong. But yeah, I don't think we've seen it recently. Though, and um, I guess we ha has been had seven games, but I think that includes Carnage kind of as well. I believe I'm not 100 percent sure, but yeah, I mean Vindicate can be picked up, and I'm kind of surprised it's actually been picked up here. Most likely going to be in the short lane, and so going to finish off here for a Keizu hero in the suicide lane, unless they're going to run a Kraken in the suicide lane. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, so final pick for Sync Esports now going to be coming out here. Uh, again, under a minute left, so they got plenty, plenty of time. But yeah, yeah, that Vindicator pick. It, it's really interesting seeing that seven games played here. Uh, overall, but again, the majority of those had to be in Carnage and Caldivar, if not all of those. Like, he was really, there was that one grand finals. It was BMG versus Sync, I believe, where the Vindicator alone went like 0 and 3 in the series or something like that. I remember that. Uh, or, or just remember him not doing too well uh, for whatever reason. But his, he just like died off. I mean, it's like, then it's like all yeah. of a sudden, like, oh, well, no more. We, we, we had fun with them, but not anymore. It's almost like some people just simply forgot about him, but. Sync didn't forget about him clearly, or maybe they just remember they're like, oh yeah, wait, Vindicator is actually <laughs> still it's a good strong, option. Yeah. Let's let's go um, here. So eh, they're gonna go it. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, and I'm kind of surprised they have picked him up though, because I mean, I, I love Vindicator. Like everyone knows that and he's a very very strong hero. But I mean, going against the heroes that BMG have, it's it doesn't make the most amount of sense to me. If if there was one team that was gonna pick up Vindicator here, it would be for it would be on the Legion side, it'd be on BMG because you can really screw up obviously the Tempest AOE combo with the Kraken and also the Glacius as well. Like the Vindicator here for BMG would be perfect, um, but here for for B for sorry for Zinc, I mean, what is it really gonna accomplish? Obviously, we won't be able to see too much in terms of like uh, it will stop big armors and it will stop. A few spells here and there, but I'm just kind of surprised they have picked up. Um, yeah, it just seems a little bit strange to me. But and then going over to the, the corrupted disciple here on BMG, um, it just seems kind of weird, like how the carry hero is. I mean, the corrupted disciple would work almost better here if, if Zinc picks it up, because the corrupted disciple are a very, very strong sort of carry, particularly in like the mid game, because obviously you don't need a lot of items, and it, it works very, very well in terms of the team fight and pushing sort of strategy that Zinc actually have. But in terms of this sort of gank and sort of super super late game sort of uh, sort of strategy and draft BMG have here, I, I just don't think Corrupt Disciple is the best pick. Um, I think there was you know multiple other options they had like you know had Wretched Hag was still on the board, and they had even like Drunken Mars. So those kind of heroes that would work quite well in terms of ganking and going late game, and, and Corrupt Disciple just seems a little bit awkward. But I mean, BMG they they definitely have a strategy to sort of try and run it and make Corrupt Disciple work. Yeah. Yeah, I, it corrupted it again. He is one of those kind of funky carry heroes, not not your everyday carry, but has potential. The conduit is a great, great tool to use and uh, can definitely provide great assistance throughout these team fights. Went on, and, you know, throughout his history too, he's he's always been one of the interesting kind of heroes. Where at least back then, he used to be built like very, very tanky and not really focusing on a whole lot of damage on it because the conduit just allows him to put out good intense damage usually as long as he just tanks up but you know something like the Frostbird or even the full Dawnbringer wouldn't be yeah. out of the question you know later on like the Wingbow the Savage Mace of course uh, very very viable options but uh, something else I'm noticing here too though Kazu actually playing the Madman I want to say usually not his kind of hero not not we don't see him play a whole lot of Madman um, yeah, but Swiftly was banned, so... <laughs> <laughs> Fair, okay, Swiftly's banned, so you gotta go with something else, I guess. This but no, um, bad, man. that is true, but I mean, just going back to Corrupted Disciple, though, it just seems to me that it just doesn't fit the sort of strategy of the draft. I mean, I think it would have fitted perfectly here for Zinc. You know, they've got a lot of push, they've got a lot of team fight, and Corrupted Disciple really does excel at that. But VMG, they have a lot of gank, and, and they need some kind of late-game presence, and I just don't know if Corrupted Disciple can either really offer much in terms of either of those kind of strategies, but... We'll have to see that everyone is back and ready up, so hopefully we'll get back in the game. There we go, be. man. Yeah, excited for this. Obviously, as soon as they're ready to go, hit that it's unpause button, and there we go. It is about damn time indeed. Game number one kicking off here. BMG versus Sync Esports. Again, this is a round of four matchup. They did not meet at all in cycle two after meeting twice in cycle one. Take that how you will, because like I keep going back to you. Obviously, this is a different BMG lineup, really, in the end. So... Uh, excited to see this highlight matchup for the first time, at least in the tournament atmosphere. Again, what is ultimately over $32,000 on the line alone here in the Diamond Division. Overall, over $34,000 if you include the top three for Gold Division. Also receiving so nearly $9,000 first place, man. Again, just so much money on the line so here. Yeah. As far as these uh, guys competing for, and of course, it's always a pride thing. 
on top of it all. So looking forward. To, and but you know, like I was mentioning though, one of the biggest critiques we get in this BMG team, it doesn't you know it's questionable if they're taking it really serious or if they're just simply here trying to earn some nice money. You know, knowing with their history. I, I did see them practice uh, at least the one day that I happened to, to, to check things out. I even cast in one of their games in a scrim cast just randomly. But So that yeah, was I good mean, to see, I will say. I don't know yeah, how much true. it was in the end, but at least it was good to see that. Yeah. I mean, I mean to me, though, obviously, I can understand. If they're just in for the money, that's fair. That's like, yeah, their own motivation. Course, yeah. That's their own sort of motto. But to me, like if you're only, only, if you're only in, it for, in for the money, then surely you'd want to put the most amount of effort and most amount of time into it. Like yeah. You want to scrim a lot. You want to be number one because like, obviously number one is the most amount of money. So to me, if you're only playing for the money, then you really want to be you know, practicing and the they, most. It should almost work so. hand in hand is what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Seems yeah, like yeah, that so. would make sense. Um, anyway, uh, the lanes here, though, it looks like it's going to be a, a dual lane here in the top lane, and I do actually like this lane rotation come out from BMG because it's most likely going to be, obviously, a short lane Vindicate. And Vindicate, yeah, he's a very, very strong solo, but against a dual lane, he can definitely suffer because obviously he doesn't have an escape mechanism. And obviously going against an empath as well, with, an, with the wall off, uh, he could definitely get picked off here if he's not careful. Obviously, he does have the Tempest to sort of back him up in some respect, but expect Zlat to be farming a lot of most uh, of this game, to be fair. Yeah, I, I did update the uh, scoreboard right there. It is actually 0-0. Zero to zero. It's not one nothing BMG. They don't get a one nothing advantage for no reason. Uh, it is 0-0, zero zero, so just clarifying that for those that maybe uh, wonder what, the, what that was. Anyways, um, of course, uh, with that said, too, before we get too much into this game, there is another series going on in the round of four. That, of course, is Reason Gaming versus Willow Keeper. And that is actually being cashed by, by a Lash over there. You can check out his, uh, his stream if you'd like to watch the other series. That is currently happening. Of course, we'll keep an eye on it as well. Loser's Bracket doesn't start until tomorrow, which, of course, we will be around covering. So here we are, though, again. Yeah, seeing the long lane corrupt the Disciple up here. Very, very interesting with that empath. You see Glacius off to the side. He knows he can't yeah. go all out here by any means. He kind of poking in a little bit, but... I mean, to be, to be fair, this this lane rotation is is definitely what Zinc need though, because now actually it's three v two, and actually here comes the rotation from Tempest. Yep, there's the stun to happen from Tempest. Empathy puts the wall up. He knows what he's doing with that. Out comes the Sage Sword. Not going to be enough though. In the end, he's going to be fine. In fact, Corrupt the Disciple. He's going for the turn kill. Not enough for the turn kill though. One auto attack away. Both teams so close to a kill. It might not be it over just yet. Yes, it is. Tempest has zero mana, so no stun's going to be coming out. But both Empath and Vindicator. Getting very low right there. Yeah. And this is what I said, obviously, because now Glacius has rotated. It's more of a tri lane versus a dual lane. And although Tempest isn't always sitting on the lane, he obviously does have that presence there. But I have to admit, them missing or them uh, dodging the, the initial gank is very, very big because obviously. If, if Slap is going to be ganking, that's fine, but he really does need to be successful with his, with his ganks for him to actually get his farm up. He's only 160 GPM. He's going to try and protect the rune here, but he's going to get boxed out by Empath. Actually, Empath doing a lot of damage. I don't think Tempest, I think Tempest will be yeah. fine in the end. But And also, another thing to important, uh, important to note, actually, is a, a little bit of a misplay come out from Slap. Actually, if you see this Ward of Revelation, he's put it on the high ground instead of actually in the middle ground here. And as a result, obviously, he doesn't get the, uh, the Ward of Sight. So a little bit of a misplay, honestly, because if he puts it in the middle, then it, it covers, obviously, the ledge that he's already put it on here, but also it covers on the left as well. And oh, in the true. end, he does miss the, the ward, actually. And, and that does give, actually, BMG a, a lot of um, sort of information, obviously, when Tempest is ganking, what's not. And, and already, I mean, BMG having a good start, having a lot of pressure, actually, on the Vindicator. Vindicator will drop in a little, very, oh, very man. low, but <laughs> should be fine in the end. And actually, some blind stones right here from Insane. <laughs> That's kind of funny just seeing those there. But uh, in the end, yeah, Vindicator is going to be fine, you know, gets the creeper pushed up. And we'll have to deal with that. But yeah, Quincy bringing out, as usual, a great stat right there. You know, one of these two player hero combinations is going to be taking a loss right here, which is pretty rare. Uh, you do got not only Zemmy's Chipper that we like to talk about, but Tempest Slapped is definitely one of those player hero combinations. Yep. That middle lane. Reckon with. But yeah, middle lane cracking. He's had some pretty good farm early on. He might be in trouble, but he doesn't realize that Parasite, oh, that was awkward. He even took the splash yeah, attack yeah. right there. Not feeling comfortable deal. opening, so. Yeah, right. I mean. I think it was a little bit awkward. I think maybe Super KG wanted to go for a hook, and but obviously Parasite was in, yeah, in the middle. But here comes Parasite. But he might actually get spotted by this Water of Revelation. Mm. Uh, I think he didn't get spotted, but he might get actually spotted by this Water of Revelation if he's not careful. Yeah. He's just going to jump into a Catman. But in there's going to be a, a pseudo trial versus a pseudo trial, and, and actually Vindicator, no, he should be fine. There's no support coming from Parasite. Um, and, and this is actually not too bad for Zinc, obviously. It's going to be Glacius versus Parasite. So Parasite isn't going to have the greatest of actually times here in the top lane. And obviously he ran all the way from the bottom sort of side of the map just to get up here in the top lane. He's only 180 GPM. You know, granted, Tempest is only 200 GPM as well, but something still to be noted. Yeah. 
Taking a look at the bottom lane, the one lane we really haven't talked too much about yet, Madman versus Chipper against Zebe Chipper. You'd expect Chipper should have a pretty good time. He's having a pretty good time, 20-6. Yeah. Madman's 14-1, though, so he's actually managing not too shabby here as uh, he is level 4 on top of that. So that's, that's worth noting, too. I mean, so although Chipper's having a good time, I mean, Casey is also doing his own part. Is that surprising yeah, I mean, or would you expect this? Not really. I think like, obviously Chipper is, is the definitely superior 1v1 matchup here and then the better 1v1 hero. But Madman can definitely hold his own with obviously the stalk and barrel. Just so much damage, not only for obviously to the hero for harassment, can pick up a lot of CS actually with the stalk. And obviously he's, he's picked up the bottle as well. So um, this is exactly how I expected it to, to match up, to be honest. Like Chipper just a little bit ahead. Corrupt the Disciple at the top lane, only 9-0. He is level 4, but again, Haxer not having the prettiest of times up here. Uh, now, with that said, I, I would think it's pretty obvious you should probably expect some kind of change here in the near future, maybe when Chipper, I mean, he is level 6 already, maybe he can start moving around here and maybe send Corrupt the Disciple bottom lane. Do you think that would be a viable option? They can't yeah. not do that right now? Or? I mean, I think they, they, need, they need to think about it because once Tempest Let's hits level 6 and this Ward of, of Sight sorry, from support does you know, sort of disappear, it's very, very dangerous for them to actually sit up here and actually you know, be safe in that respect. So maybe in a minute or two, then expect the rotation. Uh, but actually, they're going to try and roam on here onto the Tempest. Um, I don't think they're going to spot him. Actually, I think Slap actually knows what's going on. Obviously, good call missed by uh, or missed call come out from the Zinc in the top lane. Yeah. And actually, they might get sort of been trapped here. Actually, Glacius and Tempest are coming over. Actually, they might be in trouble. Yeah, they're going to find them now. But again, this is kind of awkward. Who's going to have the advantage right here? Empath. He's actually getting locked down. Cut the side, putting some good damage into Glacius. Wall off comes out. Glacius going to fall, but the bloodlust is in favor of Slapped first, so he gets a blood lust, so a one-for-one one exchange as Tempest gets credit for it. So, I think it's safe to say maybe Sink coming out on top there, but Xibi, he does work at the bottom lane. Chainsaw's used, Rocket Barrage hits, and Casey goes down. So, overall, you know, maybe not too bad for BMG in the end. Yeah, um, actually a tiny little bit of a misplay coming out from support, actually. Um, he actually essence linked onto the Tempest instead of onto the Glacier. It's actually middle lane. Yeah, the hook back right there on a Kraken. Kraken, he does have release a Kraken, and he's going to use it right on top of the freeze. No chance for Super KG to get away from that one as he takes him out. So Mickey, he's having a dominant time here in the middle lane, man. 400 yeah. gold per minute here. I mean, Super KG, yeah, Super KG wasn't doing too bad. He was about 300 GPM, but I mean, you would expect Kraken to win that 1v1 matchup, to be honest, due to obviously the splash attack he can have them. Um, but yeah, going back to sort of the Empath, there's a tiny little bit of a misplay actually, because obviously they, they started bursting down Glaciers, but the Essence Link was actually on Tempest, and that was the reason why actually Empath dropped before Insania. Uh, talking of Empath actually going at it with Tempest as well, this might be in a bit of another engagement. Yeah, you see at the top jungle up here, Tempest level 6, doesn't have enough mana, oh he just barely gets enough mana, and he's going to throw out the Tempest all the way, he used a mana potion to do that, in comes the Call of Blast though, and down goes Tempest, Empath staying oh. alive. In the meantime, in the background, yeah, you see right there the grapple just out of range. That is, what is that, a level, yeah, it's only a level one wow. grapple, so yeah. not the most range yet. He needs to max that out, unlike Debo, uh, to get yeah. that maximum range. So he well, he's survives, still cool, but he's still, still hanging around. Yeah, he wants something. Oh, uh, they're going to go for Glacius. Glacius stutter steps a little bit. He was not expecting this. He is in trouble. Out comes a freeze. This angle, though, should be perfect for Gauntlet. Wall comes out. That is definitely a dead Glacius. Will it come at a cost, though, as it goes down? Here comes Vindicator. Madman also joining the party. And all of a sudden, Empath actually very low. He's going to end up falling, most likely, in this case he gets credit. But now Gauntlet and Corrupted Disciple. Can they get away? Another TP coming in. This one from Tempest. Corrupted Disciple is being slowed down. Gauntlet goes on a Vindicator. <laughs> Look at that burst from Super KGE. The Inferno instability too much to handle right there. He ends Kraken, up with a uh, double Kraken. tap. Kraken's looking to cut him off, though. Does he have a release? No, he does not just yet. Inferno instability, trying to get that move speed, if anything. He throws with the damage, but the charge should be enough on the ledge. And yes, he goes down, and there's that new Ursa, Ursa Cortan. That's pretty sick. Coming out on top to end things off. So, fun exchange there, back and forth. I mean, he did get a double tap, but at least he dies in the end for Sync right there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, honestly, that Zibu didn't actually rotate in. He had all the time in the world. He still, had, he still has a TP on him now. But, I mean, if he TPs on there, I mean, I mean okay, Kraken, I mean, Gauntlet still might die, but at least they, they'd have to, they might be able to do something else as well. And, I mean, Zibu, an ing incredibly aggressive player, and he didn't actually go uh, and go into that engagement. So a little bit surprising there, but in the end, not the biggest of deals. I think only leading by about 1,000 gold now, and the experience is rather negligible. So, uh, in that respect, it's not too bad. Middle lane. Yeah, Parasite's going to be caught out. He got frozen initially. The Gabby Champion Glacier is such a good counter to a Parasite in that sense. Takes him out with the assistance of Kraken. But you do see Chipper now coming. He doesn't have chainsaws. If he had chainsaws here, maybe a different story. Or he is sus, but there's a chainsaws. 
in the face of Mamet at the last second as expected. He has Rockets Kraken, turns back in and down goes Simei, but down goes Kraken, the tower goes down. Holy crap, man. I mean, there was just so much damage on either side. Vindicator, he wants to finish off Gauntlet, but he's not going to get it when it's all said and done. Obviously, the Glyph of Silence, or the final chapter, I should say, was used right there by Vindicator, which screwed up Chipper initially. But, uh, I mean, that was just a lot of back and forth, man. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> a lot of back and forth. But that's exactly what I mean. Like, Zippy eventually did TP in, and, and although, he, yeah, he did die, at least there was some kind of rotation, and they got, you know, something out of it, at least in the end. So, obviously, killed Keizu and, and killed uh, Mikkei as well. They did lose the T1 tower mid, but at least, you know, there's some aggression going, and that's what they, exactly what they need. Obviously, they've got a lot of aggressive heroes. They've got Gauntlet, and Parasite, and Chipper, and they need to obviously make use of these sort of heroes before, obviously, the team fight of Zink is just too strong to sort of handle. Yeah. Vindicator back to the top <laughs> lane here is going to try to pick up that farm again. We talked about that interesting stat in the podcast, too, how Vindicator, or Flensmeister, excuse me, he's actually fourth highest GPM on his team, and I know you're still trying to get your head around it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. am I, really. I mean, again, it still is just so odd here in the carry player. Fourth highest GPM. Obviously, they won the cycle in dominant fashion even, so, you know, take that how you will, of course. But uh, he is third right here now on a team. We'll keep an eye on that, perhaps, as this uh, as this series even progresses on. But Gauntlet, man, I mean, he wants this hook. But Vindicator, okay, now he was just getting a ward of sight. So uh, he's going to probably place it, though, and see Gauntlet, if anything. Or is he? He's going down here. I don't know if Gauntlet can see Vindicator. Uh, yeah, he shouldn't be able to. So <laughs> it's just a matter of will he go to the left? And will he be spotted? Okay, they're going to spot each other right here. Gauntlet hiding behind the tree. Now comes a Gauntlet Blast. Tempest is nearby. He has an ultimate. If need be, here comes Crap the Disciple. Are they going to cluster up enough? No, they're not. Vindicator goes down. He didn't even glyph right there. I don't even know if he had mana for it, but probably wouldn't have mattered. In the end, that, that, the patience pays off there for Super KG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need to do. Like I said before, the, the team fight here on Zinc is, is rather, rather devastating, and they can't let Zinc really get ahead or even go even in terms of the into the, the mid game because if they're even or, you know, if Zinc are a little bit ahead, they're going to absolutely dominate the team fights when it comes to 15 to 20 minutes, obviously, when they picked up like the Astrolabe, the Portal Keys, for example. Uh, and BMG really do need to get ahead in terms of the ganks, and that's exactly what Super KG um, has sort of done there. Uh, and although he did obviously waste a little bit of time, it was definitely worthwhile, and, and he got his result, and he got his reward. Yeah, Vindicator coming back to the top lane, so again, I'm trying to pick up some farm, but Crypto Disciple also. I mean, he's level eight now, 275 gold for him. Like I was saying earlier, though, it, I don't know. It still seems a little odd to me that he is still even up here. I mean, I sure Chipper getting him that better start and more farm, but I mean, right now there's nobody at the bottom lane, so it's like it almost feels like that's just bad communication, really on the part of BMG to have the bottom lane completely opened up. I mean, Empath is down here, but that's not usually the hero you're trying to prioritize farm on early on in the game. So, by the way, support Empath. Guess what? He has an Ion Stone. Not surprised to see that, but that's what this guy does, and he makes it work. And, I, hell, like I say, for good reason, I think. so. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Do you feel the same as me that uh, – they're kind of missing out right here. As no, no, I agree with you. I, I definitely do agree with you, actually, because, I mean, first of all, obviously, they've got the sort of bottom lane secure. They've got a nice lane ward here placed by support and um, sort of spot any sort of rotations. And at the same time, I mean, there's no, there's not like, really a lot of control here in the top lane. They've got at least one lane ward up here, but at the same time, obviously, it's in the long lane, and Tempest is still in the jungle, and, and, and they are going to make the rotation now, but um, almost a little bit lucky, honestly, that Hackstrand hasn't actually died here in the top lane yet. Chipper is making his way to the bottom. Triple stack ancients being dead in the meantime from Sync. God, I hate the noise of that freeze, man, from Glacius. <laughs> freaking uh, this this uh, Nova Glacius, freaking all like weird sounding. Anyways, um, Chipper is at the bottom lane, though. He's level 10 now as he comes down here. He's about 1,300 gold saved up. Uh, so he's going to push out the rest of this creep wave, then most likely fall back to go elsewhere. But Crypt the Disciple is going to pick up some ancient farm himself. Again, only a single set of ancients, but still ancients nonetheless. Tank of Fett. Yeah, I saw Quincy bring this up earlier, actually. Uh, by the way, the only three teams to beat Slops, Tempest, our BMG, and Tree happens. But uh, what was that about uh, Tank of Fett earlier? Um, perhaps Tank of Parasite will be the tiebreaker. Yeah, he's 3-0, actually, on Parasite. Or he went 3-0 last cycle, I think, would be the best way to put it. So that's uh, another thing to keep in mind right here. Middle end in the meantime, Gauntlet gets caught by Kraken. Tempest, going to get there in time for the stunts? Yes, he can. Gauntlet go over the train, he puts out the power gloves, does them both. Skulls King Parasite, though, couldn't get close enough to Tempest, but out comes the silence from Vindicator. Legion team needs to be careful, that's a big chance for an ultimate. Tempest ultimate comes down, it's going to lock him in place. Here comes Madman, charge out on a chipper, and Chipper goes down before he can chain salts. What a turn! 
for St. Kate's Point. It looked like that was going to be a big place for BMG as they lined up for Chipper, but the Tempest Ultimate, as, sl as Slap does, it saves the day yet again for Sink. Yeah, and this just goes back to obviously the Zinx team fight. It's just so, so strong. Obviously, it's a well played out from the stat, but at the same time, Haxrum wasn't even there, and they were diving a little bit too deep. Obviously, you have to expect the rotation coming from Zinc. Like, if there's a little bit of an engagement in the middle lane and there's a T1 tower near the engagement, you have to expect you know, Zinc to always be there, all five, all ready for a team fight. And, and BMG, they, they sort of fought the fight 4v5 because Haxrum was off farming, and, and they really need to sort of make sure their, their team decisions are. On point because if they're not, Zinc are definitely going to capitalize on that as they did there. They took the T1 tower mid and the T tower 2 mid as well. As well, look, they can take the T1 top as well. So it just in that one team fight, that yeah. one honestly a little bit of a bad decision can be capitalized to such a big degree. Like 6,500 gold and only four, four, no, 5,000 experience as well. And, and for BMG to get back into this, they really do need to start ganking. I mean, I, I mentioned it a little bit before, but. I mean, they've only got eight kills, and although after uh, they were ahead before that team fight in that respect, they need it needs to be more honestly because they can't go behind uh, on top lane as well. Yeah, Crofton, he pushed up a little bit too far right there. They were waiting for grapple from Super KG, a great attempt, but it wasn't to be, as the damage is just too intense. So you see, Gaul is just going to farm what he can, but going to be ultimately pushed out at least for the time being. So good find from Sink. Yeah, the momentum swing ridiculous here. But, you know, this Vindicator pickup making that much more sense. Middle lane in the meantime, Zimmy goes down. And speaking of Chipper, I, I didn't put one of one together initially. Because I've always said, though, especially before all these changes happened to Vindicator, where his E used to be different in the sense it was just on him, he didn't need to tote him. So good against spamming heroes like that Chipper, especially. Yeah, you know, kind of the true. same thing here, though, with the, with the Glyph of Silence that he puts down. I mean, so really, I think that that's the main reason, if anything, why they probably picked up uh, this Vindicator to go against Zimmy's Chipper, as it was later on. Uh, but also the, the 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 final chapter. I mean, that was just huge. That last fight. I mean, we talked about the Tempest Ultimate, but if it wasn't for the final chapter that initially happened, locking him down for four or three seconds, even um, could have definitely been a very very different fight. So obviously, sure, yeah, yeah. well drafted in that sense, and they're, they're they're showing us why they drafted these heroes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then there's to me the crop disciple is as middle lane. There's a catch on a goal. I feel like Kraken's done this several times now. In the middle lane, this time again, it is going to be a kill on the gauntlet. So it's just rinse and repeat right now for Sync Esports here, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, just going back to the Corrupted Disciple, like I mentioned it in the draft, and it, it doesn't really fit in this sort of draft or strategy, and it's kind of showing here, he's only 210 GPM, so, like, and then at the same time, he's not even ganking either, so it, it, there's no kind of real sort of logical sense of why actually Kraken nearly hitting and in the end, but, but he, like, it doesn't really help in terms of the ganking aspect of the strategy, and it doesn't really help in terms of the late game carry either, because at the end of the day, like Madman and Vindicator are eventually going to out-carry uh, Corrupted Disciples, so in that respect, like it, to me, this the, the hero pickup is just a really, really odd to me. Yeah. Well, if we do see uh, Parasite and Chipper kind of pushing the middle lane right here. I don't know if they're going to be able to go far enough, though. In fact, Kraken comes in, now you can't charge the Elkan right there, so I don't know if he just was just simply doing that to maybe get away or if he was just kind of testing it. Well, uh, if anything, he kind of learned right there. That's not the case, but anyways, just uh, harasses them a little bit. Now, Madman kind of awkward. He runs right over Red Four, but it doesn't matter. They go on an empath, but here comes Colin. He gets there just in time. Out come the chainsaws, and down goes Madman. Now he gets the kill on Empath, but it's going to come at a cost. Kraken falls shortly after. Here comes Vindicator, though. Final chapter is he is locking down Chipper. Tempest trying to get in here. He has an ultimate, but this time he can't get it off. And actually, BMG fighting very strong right here. But guess what? Madman's back after the buyback. The Glyph of Silence is down. The tablet over the ledge from Vindicator. It saves him as well. It's going to help turn this fight in their favor yet again. Gaul is trying to juke a job. He doesn't have the grapple, though as he attempted to use it to kill Vindicator, and Madman will tear through him to take him out. It's a hat trick for Keizu. It's very likely going to be a quad kill. Down goes Glacius, at least, for Chipper. But Chipper, he is out in a dangerous spot. There we go, a quad kill for the buyback Madman. And, uh, well, Sink comes out on top, <laughs> despite it looking like BMG had a chance there. Yeah, and this is what I mean. Like it was a good play initially from from BNG, like trying to sort of set something up with obviously with a few ganks, a few engagements here and there. But like again, like Zinc, it's getting to the point now where it's, even if they take these engagements, they're going to be five on five, and Zinc have the superior draft in terms of the team fight. Obviously, great buyback, and actually Empath most likely going to be falling here as well. Yeah, the chase is on. I mean, he doesn't have that slow, of course. So he's gonna. Well, now he does. But the barrel roll comes out. 
Uh, in the meantime, though, he's like, okay, stay around a little bit too long. But Nick is not standing around a little too long. He's like, screw this, I'm going in, baby. Crumbs the side pole, barely lifts the wall up at the last second. Comes through and it saves Corrupted for the time being. The Rocket Barrage, it's all going to miss. Good touch by Keizu at the last second for him. Now Kraken, he, the chase is still on. Rockets aren't going to hit. Madman comes back in. So in a little bit, but not enough. Kraken will fall in the long run. So, I mean, sure, they're, they're kind of just getting caught out over extending a little bit right here. Sick, having fun with it. But uh, at least BMG guts gets a kill right there in the end. But while that's all happening, you got Tempest pushing out the top lane. Uh, Vindicator, he was farming a little bit, but now kind of in the middle. Putting up a defense if uh, this push does happen right here. Doesn't have a final chapter, but could definitely still scare them off. In fact, TP is coming in. Is that Tempest? Uh, that's Mammon right there. Tempest could come in. It was six seconds. If they stick around, and are they? It looks like it. No, he grapples away. Which everybody? He got frozen, actually, in the meantime. And now calling in trouble. He throws out the gauntlet spot. Tempest cuts him off, though. He's looking for an ultimate opportunity. He's not going to find it, though. Chipper did a good job of positioning. He applies the focus of Oh, there's that Tempest ultimate that catches Chipper. You see, MF3 tablets oh, into it on accident. That was Vindicale. That was Vindicale. Uh, oh, that was Vindicale? Okay, that makes yeah, a lot more sense. Really, then. really well played, actually. <laughs> I was like, why would he do that, buddy? That makes a lot more sense. Okay. And there's the vote to concede. I mean, Sync just, t it's like they flipped a switch, man. I mean, they just turned it on. And it was just all Sync from then on out. And, and obviously that middle fight, again, the final chapter into the big slap, Tempest Ultimate. Does the job. Yep. Yeah, and then it, that's what I mean. With these two top teams, if one poor decision in terms of a team fight or a bad like leadership call can make all the difference. Because before then, like they were equal in terms of just like, individual skill, which you know what the laning phase really is. It's all about individual skill in the laning phase. When it got into sort of the mid game and engagement started happening, Zinc sort of leadership and team sort of, and sort of team decisions you know came through, and as a result, took game one and, and just you know, kept on having the lead from throughout the game. That they did. So the Vindicator pick up again. It's been a while since we've seen Vindicator, feels like. Uh, you look back at all the way that Karnj and Kaldivar, it kind of just dropped off for whatever reason. But it's always one of these questions is how do you address Zibbe's chipper outside of just banning it? Well, there's there's one of the answers, perhaps. You pick up a Vindicator, you play it well enough, and uh, obviously it can help you now. Um, of course, it was just a team effort at the end. I mean, Mickey, he did, he did his thing as usual on Kraken. Uh, overall, 356 goal per minute for himself. So yeah, and, but but look at this though. Okay, Flint's Meister actually finished third on his team, but very close to finishing fourth even. So again, very this is close. a perfect example though of why that probably was the case. I mean, it's just as a team they just start coming together and they win team fights in big. Uh, they win the big team fights. The assists start kicking in and stuff. So.